Well, today's video is time is not a spatial dimension. If you read popular science articles, you can read all sorts of nonsense about time, starting with time is the fourth dimension in a four-dimensional space-time. Space-time this, space-time that, Minkowski space, I'll talk about it. But space is not a time dimension. And then there's further nonsense where they say, oh, time only exists because humans have, oh, it's the way they observe things evolving, so they create time. No, that's not it. Time is a real physical thing. Time is not magic. Time is an expression expressed by everything. So to begin with, all particles and quantum fluctuations have wavelengths and frequencies. And Louis de Broglie realized almost 100 years ago that every particle has wavelengths and frequency has a wavelength and frequency associated with it. So electrons, protons, neutrons, everything else has a wavelength and frequency. Photons obviously you have wavelengths and frequencies and quantum fluctuations also have wavelengths and frequencies. So everything that physically exists has wavelengths and frequencies. And spatial dimensions emerge from the wavelengths. So the wavelengths from the quantum fluctuations or the quantum field are the most elementary physical emergence of spatial dimensions and distances. That's where they first appear, that's where they're from. And time emerges from frequencies. Frequencies are cycles per second. You don't have frequencies without time. So time is an expression of the quantum field, of quantum fluctuations. So time is an emergency prop emergent property of the quantum field. And if you look at a wave, in this case I've driven, I've drawn a wave with three wavelengths over one second, so it has three cycles per second. The number of cycles, the number of waves per a unit time, the unit time and the actual wavelength are independent of each other. Frequencies are not wavelengths and time is not a spatial dimension. Now you can, as I mentioned, come up with a four-dimensional Minkowski space where you do a mathematical approach where you have a four-dimensional mathematical model. And that's because in math we can take an n-variable problem and make an n-variable mathematical problem solving space. Using linear algebra or tensor algebra you can make a matrix essentially with as many dimensions as you want and solve the problems simultaneously. Provided they're solvable. Or at least you can try to. So you can come up with a four-dimensional equation, absolutely. But that's not physical reality. So this is another case where the mathematicians who think they're physicists have ruined physics because they don't realize the physics has to be real first before you can claim the math is what's physically real. So they're taking a physical equation or non-physical equation that they're using to solve a problem and then they're saying oh time is really just a spatial dimension because I can do a mathematical equation where it looks that way. That's not how physics works. With physics you have to start with what is real. And what is real is that wavelengths and frequencies aren't the same thing. So spatial dimensions and time are not the same thing. And we can also look at this in terms of relativity because with distances traveled and the time rate of change are both affected by relativity both 
special and general relativity, although not in the way Einstein thought. And so what happens, you get simultaneous changes that are independent from each other. There are some problems where only the distance changes, and some problems where the time rate changes, and some problems where they both change. Now, one example where they both change is the Shapiro delay. In the Shapiro delay, in order to get the factor right, you have to have the distance travel be shorter, and you also have to have the clock rate slower. And, in or and you have to sum both of those. And both of these terms are actually affected by the same gamma constant. 1 over square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. So you have to multiply the original free space result times the gamma term in space near a massive body like our sun. So we can calculate this quite simple and we know from the experiment that we have both terms and the same is true with the bending of light. We need both terms in order to get the correct amount and so you have to have both effects. Now where the Einstein screwed up is instead of Einstein saying that the actual wavelengths change because of a permittivity and permeability change, a change of the dielectric constant, he said that the space dimensions change. So he basically says 97 kilometers or whatever it is of space vanish near the sun temporarily as the sun's passing and then they get reestablished once the sun goes by. Instead of just saying that the van der Waals torque of the quantum field increases which increases the permittivity and permeability, the increase in permeability, permittivity and permeability shortens the wavelength of light so light travels a shorter distance. At the same time it shortens the clock rates experienced in space which are also related to the permittivity and permeability and so you have an effect where you get a apparently longer wavelength and that's where his assumption that the speed of light's constant screwed up because in order to keep the speed of light constant if the wavelength gets shorter you have to increase the frequency in order to travel the same distance but in reality the wavelength gets shorter at the same time that the the frequency gets longer because the clocks are running slower so the speed of light actually slows at double the rate that you would have if you just looked at the wavelength problem and that's what you need to do in order to get the right value for the Shapiro delay when you do the calculation. So in the end there's only three spatial dimensions. You don't need to treat time like a spatial dimension. And in fact if you do you're just kind of screwing with your mind because you're ignoring that a frequency has to be dealt with and clock rates have to be dealt with separately from the spatial dimensions. And I mentioned in a previous video that the string theory is nonsense because string theory uh, theory takes this approach to the extreme, adding 10 or more total dimensions uh, in order to try to solve multiple equations simultaneously. And all that's completely unnecessary in order to do proper physics. Uh, you can just use three-dimensional space with a variable clock rate that's related to the change in permittivity and permeability due to motion or the proximity to matter. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this video and if you do, please like it, share it with your physicist friends or anyone else who's interested in time and I will be coming up with more physics videos in the near future so please subscribe so that you can see them. And if you'd like to know more about my research with quantum field theory and particle theory, I have some books for sale. And as a retired independent researcher, if you buy one of my books, that helps me in my retirement. 
So thanks for watching.